So, when you're a kid, uh... We're on? This is live? Yeah, this is live. Gotta tell you, man, the security getting into this place, boy, is like, get smart. <laughs> it's crazy. You really are a pariah in this town. I love it. <laughs> I love it. We're gonna change all that, baby. <laughs> Talk to me. So, when did I meet you? That was 2004. It had to be. Yeah, at least. 2004. I'm not sure you had any kids yet, or maybe you just had one. Or we were just pregnant, something like that. Yeah. Those are the days. And then you met the Jews the way they should be. It was good. It was good. So when you were a kid, you grew up in Baltimore, right? Baltimore, Maryland. And uh, when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, I'm not sure that I even knew. I think I was just enjoying the moment of being the kid. Yeah. You know? You worry about that in college. I, I kind of, as you grow up, you have a better handle on, on what your likes and dislikes, what you're good at and what you're not good at. Yeah. Um, but I think what stunted my growth of what I should be or should not be was the culture I lived in. Orthodox world doesn't really say you should go out and be a musician and it's doctor, lawyer, accountant, teacher, a steady nice normal Jewish boy job but uh, as it turned out it didn't really work out. You don't see too many parents, oh, I should go up to be a musician, get into rock and roll, it'll be great, it's such a great place for an Orthodox Jew. Uh, I didn't really get that that much. So it was much harder for me. But in college, I majored in psychology mm -hmm. for the sole purpose of getting into business. If you know how people think, you yeah. can sell them anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I got screwed in business a lot. So I kind of said, and I wound up making more money doing, uh, doing music than I did the regular nice normal Jewish boy stuff. Say, so if you know that somebody davens three times a day and Go they ahead. keep strict kosher, Go ahead. are they any more likely to be ethical in business? One would, I would say statistically yes. I would say the probability should be yes, more. Is it the truth? I don't know. I don't know all the people in the world, but I would say that if a person grows up in an environment that teaches you to daven three times a day, that teaches you to keep kosher and keep Shabbos, I would like to think that it would mean that that person would be more ethical in business. Yes. I would like to think that. So what was your reputation in high school? In high school now? Yeah. Well, I was in a few different schools in high school. Why? Yeah, you know, if you pick a semester, I'll tell you which school I was at. I was... When I got kicked out of yeshiva in sixth grade, <laughs> I went to public school, an all-black public school. It was my first introduction to black people, like, as a culture. Yeah. And it was amazing. The music they listened to, the culture they lived, their history, learning. Uh, I lasted a year in that school, mm -hmm. the middle of sixth grade to the middle of seventh grade. Uh, and then my parents took me out and put me into a, a special school for kids that couldn't really fit into other schools. I did my time there. That was also a cool school because that was more white redneck. Where and that was in the public school. I got my uh, my vibe of R and B, soul, funk, blues, jazz. That's where I learned all that. And then in the private school, I learned more of the rock and roll, long haired metal, Ozzy, Sabbath, you know, all that. Remember, up until that point. I was used to Manilow and Streisand, that's yeah. what my mom listened to, yeah. you know, uh, Israeli music, stuff like that, Jewish rock and roll, whatever that was at the time. When I finished up in the private school, my parents got me back into the yeshiva I got kicked out of in 6th grade. So I served 10th grade and half of 11th grade in that yeshiva, upon getting kicked out of that same yeshiva in 11th grade. <laughs> What did you get kicked out for in sixth grade? Sixth grade, I was a wild kid. I, I you? Did, me, no. I, I didn't fit the mold. No. I was, yeah, no, serious. No. I'm serious. I'm serious. And especially back then, they didn't understand. Uh, teachers didn't have the skills. Teachers in general, as, as a business across the board, yeah. and rabbis especially, didn't have the, uh, the wherewithal to understand that they're kids with different modality. Back then you could get hit with a ruler, a pointer, you get erasers. Did that ever happen to you? Are you kidding me? 
Me, I had five other friends that the same thing happened to. Um, i tell you a story. One time in fifth grade, the fifth grade rabbi, I had just gotten for Hanukkah this Grease book. Grease, you know the movie with John yeah, Travolta? Yeah. And I'm telling you, and by that, I love Grease. I love the movie, I love that. And this cool book, it was a picture book, it had lyrics in it, it was awesome. And we're all davening, and in my sitter, I'm looking at my Grease book, yeah. and I'm reading it, blown away. And, I mean, I had balls, because this was the desk right in front of the rabbi's desk. And in the desk, I'm looking at the degree, the rabbi catches me, he takes the book, rips the whole thing in half. I jumped over the desk, and jumped around his neck, and started punching him in the head. I was screaming and crying, I can't believe he did that. And he carried me to the principal's office, on his neck, and that was the end of my day at school that day. And that was just one of many great stories. <laughs> and then what did they kick you out for in 11th grade? 11th grade, me and a friend got kicked out. By 11th grade, I was actually very involved in Jewish outreach and, uh, and NCSY on the East Coast in Baltimore. It was a great time because I was given leadership responsibilities in that, and it was perfect for me because I felt like a role model. And when you have that sense of purpose and that sense of being, uh, you can accomplish a great deal. However, that same year in high school, uh, it was a new principal who happened to have been a, a Rebbe that was there, you know, since forever, as long as I w was ever at the school. Uh, and he kicked me and this other guy out because we really didn't fit the yeshiva mold. Uh, not really because, I mean, there was, you, you had to dress a certain way in the school, but out of everybody in the school, we were pretty much like the coolest guys, if you will. Yeah. We were just cool. Um, modern Orthodox, if you will, and they were trying to yeshiva it up a bit, and we really didn't fit the oyoyoy crowd, and then that was what we got kicked out. Now my friend's parents threatened to sue the school, I mean he had a very valid case. What what we worked out was that, in his case, because he was in 12th grade and I was in 11th, uh, I was able to finish out the year uh, home study. You know, I had teachers; they would send homework. It went like that, um, and then I had to take classes at the local community college, I finished those, they would give me a diploma, and I got, but no one would have to know about it. So that's kind of how it went down. They kept me on the DL. So you got a diploma, you did home study through 12th grade as well? No, because when I graduated 11th grade, yeah. I graduated at the end of 11th oh, grade. Oh, you graduated high Done. At the end so of what grade. would have been 12th grade for me, I started college. Okay. So in effect, I graduated a year early. But in the chronology of it, because I was held back in 8th grade for behavioral reasons, uh, they didn't feel I was mature enough to go into 8th grade just yet, I wound, it, in the chronology of it, mm -hmm. it was finishing 11th grade was really finishing 12th grade as it should be. So what year was that? I will go with 1987, give or take. It would have to be 87, because I started community college and I flew to Israel in December of 87. To check out yeshivas for the upcoming year. And how much time did you spend in Israel? Uh, about six and a half school years. Wow. I had a great time. I was 18 for seven years, man. It was the best. So what did you do there? My first, in 87, I went to visit. Hmm. So December and January, I went to visit Israel, check out yeshivas. I went to a yeshiva uh, the two that I was looking at, one of them was where my friends were going to, which is a yeshiva called Or David. Or David, I go to Or David and I'm visiting, I'm staying in my friend's room. I was there, by the second day, they kicked me out. It's just, we don't want this guy here. This, this, I was a cool kid. I was not a jacket wearer, I was not a black hat wearer, and I, that wasn't who I was. Uh, they kicked me out. So I went to check out Nevezion. And I get there like around noon, one o'clock, and I walk up the hill and there's nobody around. And I walk into the dorm and nobody's there. And I peek into some of the open doors and everybody's asleep. This is the yeshiva for me, man. And that was where I went. Uh, that was where I chose to go. I was there 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93. Uh, I flew back and forth between YU and Neve after I finished a solid year and a half in Israel. I graduated YU. Uh, with a BA in psychology, and then I flew to Israel. I was going to live there, dorm counselor. I was learning half day, working half day, dorm counselor, in 